Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. In our week 5 series of videos on the Unix development environment, we talked briefly about using a suitable code editor, and many of the examples I've gave there were based on VI or Vim. But it is a common joke amongst Unix users that there is only one standard Unix editor, ED. So I figured it might be useful to do a quick video on ED. I promise this is actually going to be useful beyond just trying to gain Unix OG credentials and trying to impress fellow nerds. Now, for years I've pronounced ED as ED, but it turns out that the proper pronunciation is in fact ED, as noted by Brian Kernighan in this linked video here, so I guess I'll have to get used to that. I may slip into calling my good friend ED at times though. Anyway, so ED was written by Ken Thompson way back in 1969 in the original first version of Unix as one of the three major components together with the shell and the assembler. After that, it inspired the X editor written by Bill Joy, which then of course led to VI. But enough of that, why don't we start and dive right in. Let's give our good old friend Ed, I mean ED, a try. Here we go. ED. Okay, um, now what? Hmm. Question mark. Return? Question mark. Help! Hmm. Okay, I give up. Let's quit. Urgh. How do I quit this thing? Well, Control C should work, right? What the? Okay, maybe just feed it end of file via control D. Yay, that worked. Okay, so that was interesting. That's about how a typical user's first ED session goes. Not very helpful. But maybe let's take a look at the manual page. Okay. So ED is a line-oriented text editor. That is, it won't give you a full window with all the contents of the file in question, but rather will be operated on a line-by-line -line basis. Next, ED operates in two distinct modes, command and input, which explains why at first we couldn't do anything. We were in command mode. So now, Let's take a second look at how we might use ED to actually do some editing. We start ED and begin in command mode, as before. We type A for append. This puts us into insert mode and we can insert text. Here we go. Ok, good. Now we switch into command mode by entering a period on a line by itself. Next, we want to save our data by writing it to a file. ED helpfully tells us how many bytes it has written here. We then quit ED simply by typing Q. And our resulting file looks just as we would expect. There, was that so hard? All right. We created a new file, but now let's actually edit it and make some changes. When we start ED with a file name, it will tell us how many bytes there are and place us at the end of the file in command mode. We can instruct ED to perform operations on line ranges, so for example, to print the data in the file starting at line 1 and until the end, we'd use this command here, 1, dollar $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $
Okay, let's have a look. Hmm. We'll need some printf statements here. We can do this by using the substitute command. That's a start. We can also jump to the first occurrence of a pattern by searching for it. Let's append the closing quotes and parents. Oh, dang, we are still in insert mode. And we don't want the closing parents on a separate line anyway. Let's delete those two lines. First, the line beginning with a quote, then the following line too. Okay, we're back where we started. Let's try this again. We don't want to append, as that puts us on the next line. Remember, ed is a line-based editor. So we use the substitute command, which, without an address range, operates on the current line only. Hitting return moves us to the next line, where we can run the same command again. If we want to see the current line, we can hit L. Plus, he works just like hitting return. But you can add a number to go to the nth line if you want to. Okay, let's write our file to a new location, quit, compile, and run the program. Now, this is all nice and well, but we clearly forgot the backslash ends. Let's fix that. First, let's only view the lines that contain printf. We do that using this command. That might look familiar to you. We globally search for a regular expression and then print the matching lines. In other words, the command has the form g slash re slash p or grab, which is exactly where the grab command comes from. Here, re actually match return, but anyway, we wanted to fix our printf lines. Since ed is line-based, it makes sense to operate on line numbers. Let's have ed show us what lines are on what line numbers. There. So now we can say, on lines 4 through 5, substitute the closing quotes with the backslash n followed by the closing quotes and parents. Okay, let's write our changes and quit. Yay, much better. So now, since ed is line-based as we noted, and since it has a command mode separate from insert mode, we should be able to feed it specific commands simply on standard in. Here, let's give that a try. Hey, cool, that works. We simply provide the command and send that in, and the D processes it. Now let's give it a command to make actual changes. Here we tell ED to move line 4 to line 5, and then to write the changes it made. ED tells us the number of bytes at startup and the number of bytes when it wrote the changes, and our file now looks like this.
Here, we're passing the dash "-s flag to suppress the diagnostic messages. And we see that we are able to change the file by simply describing what changes to make in commands that ED understands. As noted above, this command mode is so useful that we've actually derived complete other tools from it. Most notably, of course, the grab utility. Now, hopefully we've seen that ED is actually quite interesting, but how does understanding ED help us? One way is that mastering ED will also make you become more proficient in using VI, for example. Here, let's take a look. VI also has two modes, Command Mode and Insert Mode. We have to enter Insert Mode before we can insert data, just like in ED. We switch to Command Mode and can operate on line numbers search for patterns, or perform transformations based on line numbers, just like in ED. Note the similarities between the commands we run in ED as well as in VI. We write the data and quit the editor, almost exactly like in ED. The only difference here is that while ED is line-based, VI is, well, visual. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little detour into the standard Unix editor. And don't worry, this was not entirely frivolous. Aside from helping you better understand VI or the set command, we'll return to the idea of describing code changes via line-based commands in our week 5 series on Unix development tools when we cover the diff and patch utilities. In the meantime, maybe try to do a little editing every once in a while using our good old friend Ed. I mean, ED. Goodbye. I mean, um, quit. <laughs>